All right, I'm going to be talking about long jump techniques or more specifically the flight phase of movement, which is what happens between your takeoff at the board and your landing in the sand. So there's three main long jump techniques. We have the sail, the hang, and the hitch kick. And these work with pretty much all athletes with varying degrees of success uh, based on individual differences. Next, we have the double hitch kick, um, which really only works for high level athletes and sometimes not even for them because you need a lot of time in the air in order to complete two full hitch kicks. Next, we're going to check out some hybrid styles, which is often a hitch hang combo. And uh, lastly, we're going to check out a case study of Juan Miguel Echevar's transition from sort of a hang hitch hybrid when he was a junior athlete to the double hitch kick he does today. And we're going to look at why that helps him. During the flight phase of long jump, the goal is to reduce the forward rotation caused by our takeoff. If this is a confusing concept for you, you can think about riding a skateboard down a sidewalk and hitting a crack. Your skateboard is going to rapidly decelerate while the rest of you keeps moving at the same speed. What that looks like about the axis of your center of mass is forward rotation, which is why you feel like you're going to face plant. The same thing happens when we do long jump or triple jump when we plant our takeoff leg the horizontal velocity of our foot is reduced as we take flight, but the top half of our body keeps moving at the same speed, which causes the forward rotation. The second thing we're trying to do with these techniques is to set up our landing position to occur at the right time. So what that means is we're delaying reaching for the sand until right before we're about to hit it. The last point is that some people find techniques such as the hitch kick allow them to more effectively carry their speed through the board. Um, what that basically comes down to is that some techniques can, in a way, trick individuals into having better body position at takeoff. The first technique we're going to look at is the sail, and we're going to see this demonstrated uh, by Chris Tomlinson right here. He's a UK athlete, personal best of 8 meters 35, and he's unique in that he's the only male athlete in the last little while I've seen compete the sail. So here we go. We've got our first checkpoint. Uh, we've got a good arm drive, knee drive. The thing about the sail is that that knee drive is going to stay where it is for pretty much the whole jump, right until the end. Second checkpoint, he's brought his arms back. Third checkpoint, he's starting to bring his arms forward, but as you can see, that jumping leg has come to meet the knee drive, and now they're moving as a single unit. As his arms come forward, he gets into that landing position and extends his knees. To me, this landing position happens a little bit too early. Um, but he has such good control and flexibility that he's still able to have a really good landing. Um, and you'll see that reflected in the marks that he makes in the sand. Where his feet and his bum and his right arm hit are basically at the same distance in the sand. This is how you know the landing was done effectively. If he was feeling the effects of forward rotation, he would have his feet hit first and the rest of him hit quite a bit later. Despite the fact that his landing position looked you know, to me a little bit early, he was still able to have a really good landing. The thing about the sail is it doesn't counter forward rotation quite as well as the other techniques. So you'll usually notice the people that can compete the sail at a high level also have really good flexibility, or they just don't spend as much time as other athletes in the air. So this is Florentina uh, Uicho. She's a Romanian athlete, and she has very clean technique when it comes to the sail. Um, you'll be able to spot each position individually. First checkpoint, she's got a good arm drive, knee drive. Next thing that happens, both arms go above her head. That jumping leg moves to meet the knee drive. And then she gets into her landing position. This is Ivana Spanovic. Usually competes the hitch kick, but right here you can see her compete the sail to about, you know, a seven meter jump. Next technique we're looking at is the hang, and we're going to check out American athlete Brittany Reese. The hang is very similar to the sail, but the main difference is that you drop your knee drive after you take off, and both legs move from underneath you together to the landing position. This is going to help counter forward rotation a little bit better than the sail, but the main difference is how it delays your landing. So at our first checkpoint, we have good arm drive, knee drive. The next thing that's going to happen is her arms drop down by her hips, on their way to rotating above her head. At the next point, she has dropped her knee drive and has collected both legs below her. And then she moves into her landing position by bringing her arms through and getting her knees to her chest. Then she extends her knees as she approaches the sand. 
The reason this counters forward rotation a little bit better than the sail is that she spends less time in a bunched up position. Sort of how a gymnast will tuck in order to flip faster, her body is extended to prevent herself from rotating forward. This will only benefit athletes that have enough flight time to make each position before landing. Now we're going to take a look at Robert Emion. He is definitely my favorite example of the hang, if not my favorite long jumper to watch. He sort of just floats when he's in the air. So we'll check out each checkpoint together. He's got a good arm drive, knee drive to begin with. Then you'll see both the knee drive and the arms go down. While the arms will rotate around and above his head. He brings his arms forward and he gets his knees to his chest. The arms sweep underneath his body and he extends his knees to get a really good reach into the sand. And you can see his bum lands right at where his, his feet sort of broke the sand. The next technique we're going to look at is called the hitch kick. It's called the hitch kick because your legs keep cycling after you've taken off from the board. So it sort of gives the impression that you're running on air. We're going to see Wang Jianin, a Chinese long jumper, demonstrate this technique. First of all, he has a good knee drive arm drive. We're going to focus first on the arms because it can be a little complicated to see all at once. So he's a left footed jumper, so he's got his left arm drive and his right arm trailing. So the thing about the hitch kick is that both arms are going to rotate forward from the point that they began at, at takeoff. Your arm drive arm is going to move down to your hip while your trail arm is going to move above your head. And you're going to get into this nice post position, which is maximally opened up and is really going to counter forward rotation. Next, the arm drive arm is going to continue rotating back and around and is going to meet up with the trail arm. And then what happens is they both meet above your head before they start to move forward and help facilitate that landing position into the sand. Now let's go back and check what the legs are doing. So right here we've got a good knee drive and what's going to happen next is that knee drive is going to extend below as you bring your jumping leg uh, or your jumping foot up to your hip, which is exactly the same motion as running. It's, it's a little bit more intuitive than you would think. Now you've got your, your jumping leg as the knee drive while your other leg is back and it's going to meet it forward just like the sail. It's called the hitch kick for this movement. Um, when you see a hitch kick in dance, it means switching your legs in the air, basically. So you've sort of switched which knee drive is forward. Next, we're going to take a look at S.A. Broom perform this technique. She's a Nigerian athlete, and she's here competing at the 2019 World Championships in Doha. At the first checkpoint, she has really good arm drive and knee drive. That knee drive is going to extend underneath her while the arms continue rotating forward. One arm up, one arm down. That's pretty characteristic. Arms catch up with one another, and they reach forward at the same time as her knees extend and her hips are in maximal flexion. This is Irving Saladino, a Panamanian athlete, probably one of the best long jumpers of all time, really consistent, really good first position there, good, good knee drive, arm drive. He's got that post position, really opened up, preventing any uh, forward rotation. Then he switched his legs in the air. Both arms are now moving as one in order to sort of sweep underneath himself while well, he has that knees to chest position and then extension of the knees as he gets closer to the sand. We're going to take a look at the double hitch kick now. It obviously looks very similar to the single hitch kick, but you'll actually see the legs switch twice in the air, among other things. We'll take a look at the different ways we can tell whether it's a single or a double hitch kick. So this is Juan Miguel Echevarra demonstrating this technique. So our first checkpoint, we have arm drive, knee drive. Same thing as the single hitch kick so far. We got our first post position. The next position is how you can tell if it's a single or a double hitch kick. We move into a second post position right there. 
Uh, so you can see the legs have switched twice. And now the resulting knee drive that's going to finish the jump is going to be the same as the knee drive off the board. So he's a right-footed jumper, starts with left leg knee drive, and he ends with a left leg knee drive as well because the legs switch twice. Another good way to tell is watch that recovery arm or that, uh, that trail arm. It goes around twice. So left arm around once and then around twice. And so that's an easy way to tell. If you're on YouTube, you can slow it down and see if that trail arm is going around once or twice. Now we have Mike Powell here performing this technique. He's the current world record holder at 8 meters 95. And you'll see him hit the same positions as uh, Echevarra. So we've got our arm drive, knee drive. It's kind of hard to tell. First post position, second post position. And then you can see left footed jumper. He ends with the right knee drive and then extension into the pit. Now we're going to take a look at hybrid styles, which are often a hang-hitch combo. Um, and that is because you see the arms do what they do in the hang, and the legs do uh, a single hitch kick. So we've got Reg Rutherford demonstrating this for us, athlete from Great Britain. Let's take a look at our checkpoints. Arm drive, knee drive is normal, but the next thing that's going to happen is the legs are going to begin to switch, while both arms are going to come back at the same time. So he's got that post position. And then he switched his legs in the air, so now he has a right leg knee drive, and both arms are moving as one, just like they were from the beginning of the jump. In the hitch kick, you have that position where you have one arm up and one arm down, but in the hybrid style, that never happens. They always move as one. Next, we've got Ashton Eaton, who demonstrates this. You can see that big circle he makes with his arms that really looks like a hang, but he is sort of doing that hitch kick motion with his legs. Now we're going to take a look at Juan Miguel Echevarra once more and his transition from a hybrid technique to a double hitch kick. Now the problem with his previous hybrid technique is that he wasn't able to delay his landing position for long enough, so it occurs way too early in the jump, and he sort of opens up before he hits the sand, which causes his feet to hit first, and then you'll see him sort of roll out of the landing right afterwards. Starting your landing position too early is going to increase forward rotation from being in a tucked position, and also due to the common forward lean of the torso that usually accompanies stretching for the sand. It's also very difficult to hold your landing position for long enough when you start it too early, so you're likely going to open up prior to landing like Echevarra, and because of all that forward rotation, he sort of rolls out of his landing. Um, that's a way that you can tell if you're feeling the effects of forward rotation, is if you ever feel like you're rolling out of a landing. What we'd want to do is delay that landing position uh, by sort of either changing up the technique or just being more patient with the landing. So this is a better jump, he doesn't roll out of it, but you will see that his feet make a mark in the sand way before the rest of him does. With his previous technique, he's very far from the sand when he gets into his landing position, but with his current technique, uh, it's timed quite a bit better. That specific example may have given you the wrong idea since Echevar had a lot of success once he switched techniques. What you have to remember though is that Echevira's problem was that he got a lot of height off the board and was unable to delay his landing position. Switching techniques seemed to solve that problem for him. But did he need to switch his technique? No. He and his coach decided that this was the right thing for him. From this you may discern that the double hitch kick is the best technique and all the best athletes do this. But what I hope I've shown you is that every technique can be competed at a high level. Look at Robert Emian. He competed with the hang, and he has a personal best of 8 meters 86, which is the fourth all-time best long jump. He was also 5'10 and 150 pounds. The more advanced jumper has more options in terms of what jumping technique they can use. What is more common is an athlete wants to hitch kick, but does not spend enough time in the air for this to be effective. They will reduce their total distance as they are not able to get into their landing positions quickly enough before they hit the sand. Greg Rutherford, for example, doesn't get a huge amount of height off the board, 
but his hybrid style allows him to perfectly time his landing position and get every centimeter of distance possible. Okay, thanks for checking out this video. I hope I've made things less complicated, um, but let me know if you have any questions.